As women, we have a tendency to take things way too personally. And here's what happens. We have the gift, unlike the other gender in our species, no offense to those who are listening to this, <laughs> women have the gift of memory. <laughs> we remember everything. We can tell you what day it was, what you said to us, what we were wearing, how we felt. You love it when you lose your keys and we know exactly where they are. <laughs> you hate it when we, we do what's called gunny sacking and something triggers us and we just like dump it at your feet. It was 1958 and you said, wah, 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 wah. you know, it's like, okay, women, here's a tip for us on taking it personally. Be careful because when we do, we take it to our person, which is our self-worth. So a couple of tips, let it go. And I, I said I'd quote the Bible today. This too shall pass. We have an amen. Thank Whatever you Whatever we have or don't have in our checking account does not determine who we are. Our self-worth, our self-esteem came from elsewhere. It came from the soul. It comes from our spirit. So what we do with it is going to be up to us. I've shared a little bit about my story. Perhaps you relate to it. And whether you do or not, you've got your own story. And here's what's important about those stories, because they've already happened, they're in the past, is that we need to really let go of those things and move forward into what our best life has to offer. Living what matters to you is setting those priorities. I do know that my life as a speaker is to be a messenger of hope. I get that. And I get that I'm living my purpose and my passion and being here to share this with you today and to set the course and set the tone and set the pace for the rest of the day to open your mind, open your hearts so that you receive every message from every speaker here. Have conversations with us. We're here to serve you because that's an extension of our love to you. So turn to each other and say, yep, I'm ready to receive. <laughs> According to Dr. Roger Malott, PhD stress management expert for women, there are four unconditional support systems that you and I have. Number one are pets. How many of us have pets? Yeah, yeah. Kids don't count, by the way. <laughs> don't they love us unconditionally? You know, we can be 20 minutes late, and they will run up at the door. It's like, oh, good, you're home, you're home, you're home, you're home. <laughs> Lick, 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 lick. They love us. You know, we can step out of the shower and the cat's not sitting there saying, excuse me, you're putting on a little weight there, ain't you, babe? <laughs> and unlike some people in our lives, our pets are the first to run to us when we're emotional. If you know what I'm not saying. If you don't have a pet, adopt one. They're, they're waiting for you. So pets are great. Number two is a belief system or your faith. Whatever that is, for you, have one. Everything that I've endured in my life, and one of my favorite quotes from Eleanor Roosevelt helped me get through some of the most challenging times in my life, is that no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. <sighs> mm. No one can make you feel inferior without your consent. Eleanor Roosevelt, one of the greatest first ladies this country has ever had. Number three on this list are passion hobbies. Now here's what a passion hobby is. It's something that you do outside of your work, maybe it is your service or your volunteerism, that helps you keep your, your sanity for doing your work. My father is an organic gardener, and I know that when he would come home, he would go out to a little quarter of an acre in back of the house where he has citrus trees that lemons the size of grapefruits. He has a green thumb, just amazing. A cherry tomatoes, you name it, he could grow it. And I know that when he would come home after his job of being a design checker for our military aircraft, that this is how he would relieve his stress and let go of the pessimism that he needed to do his job. Could you imagine that you have somebody working on the airplane and they say, oh, it's okay, it's only one engine. You know, so <laughs> it's okay. You know, if, if it falls off, you know, you can still keep going. 
No, you want to have somebody, and he was perfect at his job. He was fantastic. And yet, he needed to relieve that stress. My father would come home, immediately go out into the garden, which I know took care of any, you know, violence, any domestic abuse. It's like because he was happy with himself, he was nurturing his soul and his spirit. You need to have a passion hobby, whether it's dancing, reading, watching Nate Berkus' new show, you know, whatever that it might be for you, Dr. Oz, I love him, love all of his tips. Number four on this list are special people. Do you have special people in your life that you haven't seen in quite some time and then all of a sudden you reconnect and you pick up the conversation right where you left off? Like without skipping a beat. How many of you are here with that special person? Yeah. Turn to them and give them a hug. 